I want us this week to deal with grace, uh, understanding the grace of God. Because if we, each one of us understands the grace that is operating in your life, there will be no pulling and pushing, there will be no competition, there will be clarity, there will be peace in your life. Uh, if you understand all the dimensions of grace, and we will be later ending up with what I call apostolic grace and what this means, it will be a blessing, praise the Lord. So, uh, what is grace in definition? There are two words that we can look at. One word is an Old Testament word that is used to describe grace. It's a Hebrew word which is cheesed, like, you know, I can only pronounce it like in English, but it's C-H-E. S E D, like chest or cheesed, you know, but it's not cheese because it's not double S. This word speaks about deliverance from enemies. When God delivers you from an enemy, in the Old Testament understanding, He's done something amazing. He has released grace. When He delivers us from affliction or from adversity. This is grace from God. This word, chist, in the Hebrew language also means enablement. It also means daily guidance. You know, when God is enabling you, when God is guiding you every day, when he's forgiving you, it also has a connotation on forgiveness and also preservation. Uh, forgiveness and preservation. You see, uh, English is not very rich in many words, but sometimes some of those old languages, like Hebrew language, you find one word that has a very loaded meaning and many words. In the New Testament, the word is charis for grace, which is C-H-A-R-I-S, or charis, which focuses on the provision of salvation. You know, God has provided salvation. But we could go further and say basically grace in the New Testament is God's love in action. When God acts for us through his love, surely that is his grace. So his love in action towards men uh, who merited the opposite of love. They didn't deserve love, they deserve judgment, but God decides to move in love. So in other words, grace is God moving from heaven and earth to save sinners who could not fit, you know, or who could not lift a finger to save themselves. How many of you know we can never save ourselves? We can't deliver ourselves. We can't, you know, do anything to bring us out of any situation. So in the scriptures, it is out of God's love that we are set free praise God, that we are saved. That act is the grace of God. Now, so therefore God's grace also means God sending his only son to the world, you know, to go all the way. You remember an old song we used to sing in worship that he came from heaven to earth to show us the way. That's God's grace. Amen. And you know, in the process of him saving us, he descended right into hell. And guess what? He rose again from the grave so that we can be reconciled back to God. Amen? And so that where he will be or where he is, then we can also be there. Amen? Now, in the scriptures, we have different, actually very many verses talking about the grace of God that kind of gives us different shades of the grace of God. You know, when you talk of the hand of God, that comes to help us, to lift us, it, that hand of God, even us, like man's hand, because we are created in his image, has five fingers. I'm just assuming God has five fingers. Uh, one day when we go to heaven, we will try to greet him if we are allowed near the throne. But the way it looks, the glory around the throne, nobody can come near. When he tried to show up in the mountain, and Moses and Aaron were tried to come near, there was a problem. But anyway, uh, the grace of God is many-sided. It's actually many, 
manifold grace of God, like scripture says. From the word charis, we have the word charisma, which charisma has to do with joy, love, thank, thankfulness, kindness, and merited favor. All these kind of words, Father, help us in defining grace. Now, but look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. It's a verse I appreciate. Actually, yesterday I read this verse in the church. But to each, uh, which verse are we reading? Yeah, good. That in the ages to come, all right, go back for the sake of scripture begin, beginning from the last full stop. So we don't, yeah. But God, who is rich, where did you go, brother? It begins that far. Okay, so that if we read verse 4, we have to read verse 1 because of the but. So watch it, watch it now. Just go back to verse 7. Uh, to verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us. How? In Christ Jesus. Praise God. Now, this chapter 2, I don't like butchering scripture. I don't like reading scripture and in the middle of nowhere just run with it without its context. Are we together? So I think it's important, even if I only define this one verse, because today's Monday, we can continue later. Are we together? So if we read verse 1, we will understand what this is all about, the riches of his grace. So verse 1, uh, go back to verse 1 of this chapter 2, uh, so that quickly we see what the context is. You, he made a life who are dead in trespasses and sins. It's all in history. Anybody, before they come to Christ, they were dead in Christ. I mean, they were dead in sin and trespasses. Right? But we, he made a life. We appreciate that, right? Verse 2. In which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. When we were disobedient, we were under another lord, as it were, the prince of the air, and we were under him. We lived according to his demands. Then verse 3 says, Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature what were we by nature children of wrath just as others in other words the way we lived we were to end up under the wrath of god there was no way we were to escape for the wages of sin is death but the gift of god is eternal life through jesus christ our lord i was quoting romans 3 23 and 24 but verse 4 here says while this is what used to happen but god who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us now you appreciate the mercy of god right you appreciate this but glory to god because if you are in the city of nairobi and you are living under the prince of the power of the air in Nairobi. Then you are captive. You only fulfill his demands. When he throws a finger, move that way. You move that way and do what you want. But we are not under that prince. We are under somebody else. We are under the Lord Jesus Christ. The captain of our salvation. If you are born again, you are under him. I hope you are under him. If you are not born again, we are in general manangi. Uh, what we used to call Kenyan heathen. You know, just ordinary person who is under the course of this world, child of disobedience, under the rulership of that prince of darkness. And that's not a good place to be. Amen? But God was rich in mercy in that he loved us. So he did something. Amen? So verse 5 begins to bring in salvation. He says, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with him with christ by grace you have been saved so the whole salvation thing wow by grace the whole salvation thing is the lord god our father acting in love by sending his son jesus so that by that act we are calling the grace of god we are now saved he did more he raised us up together 
and made us to sit in another place before we were under the course of this world the prince of the power of the air but after salvation through grace look at how our seat has changed we are now seated in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus heavenly places is spiritual realms we are seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus uh, one time thank God for you know listening to preachers preachers are loaded one preacher said this word seat if you trace it back in the Greek language is the same word used when a magistrate sits on her chair or his chair in the court to rule is a seat sitting of rulership praise god so can you imagine through salvation we are received into a spiritual judicial system and we are allowed to sit with christ my god and we are therefore permitted to rule with him wow welcome to court mm. Now your case can be handled now that you are part of the department. Come on. You are part of the judicial spiritual system. When decisions are being made, you can read the file in the inner chamber before we come to the gallery. Amen. Verse 7. That in the ages to come. Now, because of all that happened... This now is thrown into the future. In the ages to come, he will still have the opportunity to do what? To show us the exceeding riches of his grace. So grace brought you in. Grace will also secure the future. I'm happy about tomorrow. Hey, I'm happy about the future. Because grace that brought me in. Look. The Bible here uses the word riches of his grace in his kindness towards us in Christ. Listen, there is no grace without Jesus being part of that game plan. Without Jesus, there's no grace. Hallelujah. So thank God for Jesus. He has secured the future for us. Amen. Look at verse 8. Verse 8. By, for by grace... The word for is the word for because. So because by grace you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Wow. So I, I admire when we were coming in. I, was, I said you know, something amazing to the people who are with that. I'm amazed and intrigued by the wisdom Paul had. The depths of revelation that Paul had to write the New Testament. Because... When you read the Gospels, you hear the stories. Zacchaeus, Bartimaeus, the two blind men, the demoniac of Gadara, the you know, Decapolis. You, in the, new, the Gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, you only hear the stories and, you know, what happened, you know, the storms, you know, all those kind of stuff. But when you come to the epistles, it's broken down. Hey, and it goes deep to explain all that Christ did. And now bring something called grace. This is amazing. By the way, for you to enjoy this week, your eyes have to open in the spirit. Are you listening to me? Otherwise, I'll be talking my own stuff and you're not even getting it. So I decree the spirit of revelation upon you. And I declare the spirit of understanding upon you. And I declare may our inner eyes see what we could not see before. Thank you, Holy Ghost. And you know, faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. When we hear, we position ourselves for the supernatural. Because when we hear, we begin to step into that grace. So as I talk about the grace of God, the grace in your life, may it multiply. May you therefore be able to accomplish more than you could have accomplished before. May you enter into places in the spirit you could not enter before. May you also receive with a greater speed than you received before. Why? God is in action. Grace is in action this week. Zaya. I don't know what they are, but sometimes they help us. They help keep the engine flowing. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, we were just reading scriptures. Let's read Romans 3. I quoted it, but because they are young people, they need to see it. 
Romans 3, 23. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says what? Four. Now, again, four. You go back to 22. You know. But now, the righteousness of God, apart from the law, is revealed. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Okay, there's something called the righteousness of God here that is being revealed. There was the law, and the law revealed something. But there's now something else called the righteousness of God. Amen. How to be right with God, and the whole process of realigning you with God through Christ Jesus is what you call the life of righteousness, the righteousness of God. But then verse 23 says, I mean the next verse 2 says, 22 says even the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So you can never be right with God without going through Jesus Christ. Once again, Jesus is everything to us. That's why we pray for people to be saved and to receive Christ. Because when you receive Christ, then you're going to enter in into all that is available in the kingdom. And Jesus is the door. Are we together? Anybody else who enters through another door is a thief and a robber. But even the righteousness of, righteousness of God is found through faith in Jesus Christ. To all and on all who believe, for there is no difference. So anyone who believes anywhere can access God. You know, hold there. Do you remember when Peter was preaching in Cornelius' house? You are not there, but did you read it somewhere? Acts chapter 10, verse... Uh, let, let's go there. Acts 10, 34. We'll be back. You have 10 fingers. So if you have a Bible and you are opening, put the finger where it is. Then let's go to another place. We'll be back. Thank you, Jesus. And Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. Do you remember whoever believes? So even here Peter is saying, God shows no partiality. We are Jews. But now I am in a Gentile's house. It just happened so quickly. How am I here? I now, Peter is shocked. He's saying, surely God shows no partiality. Look at the next verse. It's powerful. For in every nation, whoever fears God and works righteousness is accepted by him. By him. Anyone. So I declare to you in the lunch hour, if you fear God, if you honor him, ah, if you need him, you'll be accepted by him. Because he shows no partiality. Hallelujah. So the gospel and the good news is for all nations, for all people. There's no difference. If you believe, you'll get it. Go back to verse 23. For all uh, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Last week we heard about the glory of God that Pastor Ben was teaching about. But you can see, without Jesus, even that glory, where's we honor? Glory, one time there's a preacher who came to preach here for us, Bishop Isaac Wawire from Bali. He said there are 16 words for glory. I think he gave us five. Fire fell in the service. He's never been back to give us the other 12. I tell you the truth. 16 words. Wealth, splendor, majesty, uh, you know, and others I can't remember. I mean, it was amazing. So when you hear falling short of the glory is a very serious matter. But it is sin, sin that makes us to miss the glory of God. The word sin there in the Greek is missing the mark. You are going, you didn't get to the right place. You missed it. You got lost, missing the mark. But verse 24 says, though all have sinned, being justified freely by what? By his grace through the redemption that is found in Christ Jesus or that is in Christ Jesus. Hold there. That's a very serious matter. There are technical words. What's like justified? What's like redeemed? Redemption. These are technical words. But justified, you know what it means by when you justify yourself? You're trying to give your own reasons to escape this and that. God made us through Christ to be justified. We were declared not guilty. Glory to God. We were guilty, but through Jesus Christ, we were declared not guilty. Not guilty. Why? Because of redemption. What is redemption? It is that which you pay 
with the highest price possible and the blood of Jesus is the greatest price heaven could provide because Jesus became the Lamb of God and by shedding that blood and when we receive Christ that blood comes into our life and into our world and then we are justified so thank God for Jesus anything we'll ever access is through Jesus Christ hallelujah so many verses uh, <laughs> This is another technical one, but because this is the first day, let's read this one. This one is very technical. Rom Romans 5. Uh, we'll read it from verse... Uh, let me show you the verse. We're going to begin. We will read 15 and 16, but let me give you a place to begin. Uh, 12. This is a technical one. Very technical, but let's read it because all of you have been to school. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world, you only see. What's the name of the man? Adam. Uh -huh. And death through sin. How did death come? Through sin. And thus death spread to all men because all sinned. One man sinned, so all of us sinned. Death came through that one man, so now all of us uh, have, the death has spread even to us. That's next verse. For until the law Sin was not in the world. But sin is not imputed when there is no law. That's, that's, that's something to sell her, to think about. Before there was law, there was no sin. You know, as soon as God said, this is how you should live. So if you don't live this way, then you have sinned. You have missed the mark. Verse 14. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Because Moses is the one who brought us the law. Even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam, who is a type of him who was to come. So, uh, uh, read on. Th these are things we need to use uh, when we are doing Bible studies so that we can define our words. In the lunch, it's not possible. But the free gift is not like the offense, you know, the offense that came through Adam. For if by the one man's offense many died, much more, the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to many. Ah, you will see the next verse to make it even clearer. And the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from the many offenses resulted in justification. These are all comparisons. What sin will do, you know, what offense will do, what death will do, I mean, how it came, and also what will happen of this offense and this death and of this sin because of Christ. Verse 17, the last one. So, for if by the one man's offense, death reigned through the one. Is that correct? Offense brought in death through the one man. Much more, those who receive the abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Again, thank God for Jesus Christ. Because now through him, that sin, that offense, that death is now handled through the gift of the one man. Or the grace. Hallelujah. So we thank God for Jesus. He's giving us amazing grace. The abundance of grace. We're just reading these scriptures to help us understand what grace is all about. Hallelujah. Now, there's a certain aspect of grace. Uh, it's a Greek word called doma. D-O-M-A that emphasizes on the character of the gift. The character of the gift. Now, you realize the word gift, the word grace, and the word favor, these are relatives. You know, there's a principle in the spirit that spirits move in groups. For instance, where you find doubt, you'll find fear. <laughs> Uh, so where you find favor, you find grace, you find gift. <laughs> These three work together. 
And sometimes the word charis and charisma is all, you know, sometimes covering all those three dimensions. The gift, the grace, and the favor. Hmm. Now, to expand this grace, grace is also like a spirit. Hmm. Read Zechariah and see how the prophets put it in chapter uh, 12, verse 10. God is spirit, and this God puts himself in man in the form of grace. And I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierce. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one who grieves for a firstborn. It looks this grace as a spirit is put in man. Wow. So you see a man or a woman moving, but in him is the spirit of grace. Let me make it clear in the New Testament. Chapter 4 of Ephesians verse 7. Because grace is eternal and timeless, but in form of spirit, grace is also put in someone. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Wow. Christ's gift. So in this package, in the hands of Jesus, or this package in Christ, then from the gift Christ is distributed and released grace for each one. So I believe, ladies and gentlemen, everyone who is here, you have received a certain measure from Christ. Uh, you can't say, sorry, I almost spoke in Swahili, then I remembered you are here. You can't say that uh, I'm the one Christ has talked to to handle all of you, and without me, you can go nowhere. So I'm the, the, uh, the mightiest, I'm the carrier of everything you need. So that's wrong because here it says each one. So there is something in somebody else that the, 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 the man doesn't have. Am I talking too much? No, you know, we need to help Kenya because we are confused through the doctrine of this error. And we need to loudly say it's error. And you won't take us anywhere because we are also contending for the faith and helping the church not to get confused. Tell your neighbor, welcome to the apostolic house. And just come moja moja wawa didn't criticize what TV because I'm eh, we and I jifanya prefect ya wengine. Apostles are prefects, monitors, monitors. Sorry. Amen. All right. So to each one grace was given. Grace is a spirit, and some people Christ deposited himself in them. And now you can refer to them as grace from Christ. Wow. So one aspect of grace is that salvation we received. But the other aspect is grace is also a spirit deposited in a man. Uh, let's explain it in the next two verses. Therefore, he says, when he ascended, this is Christ, on high, he led captivity captive. And then did what? Give gifts unto men. Do you remember those Christ's gifts? To each one of us, grace has been given. So Christ's gift. So he gave gifts to men. Next verse. Now there's ascending. He's now to explain, trying to explain this. What does it mean? But that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth. This is when Jesus went to hell, right? Ten. He who descended is also the one who Ascended. You see the one there is capital O because we're talking about Christ. Far above all the heavens that he might feel all things. That means this gift, this grace he's giving to each one is for a purpose. 
to fill up certain things on the earth. Because grace given to you is for a purpose on the earth. We need to know this grace resident in your life, what is it for? Is to fill in certain things that Christ wanted to fill on the earth. Well, for me, I'm happy I'm on the earth because I'm filling in something. If you don't know what you are on the earth doing, uh, you, you will soon uh, leave us. Uh, you know, if someone is on the earth and doesn't know why they are here, uh, should they be here? Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to put it in a nice way, but you know what I just say. May God give you understanding. You better go tonight and say, Father, by the way, why am I here? Uh, so far, so good. But Father, uh, should I, I think I want to continue to be here uh, on the earth to fill up something. Not to eat space, but to fill up something. Then the next verse 11 is mega. It says, and he himself gave some to be. Now, so to each one of us, grace has been given. Verse 7. Uh, according to the measure of Christ's gift to some, he gave apostles. So an apostle is grace. A prophet is grace. He has the spirit of Christ and his grace. A pastor is grace. An evangelist, grace. The teacher, grace. So every fivefold minister is grace. Later I should be teaching on how do you receive this grace? Hmm. How do you receive this grace? Listen to what Paul said to the Philippians because they sent some offerings to him. <laughs> Philippians 1, 7. You know, the whole reason why the book of Philippians was written was because they gave offerings, they supported Paul, so he gave them a thank you letter. The whole book of Philippians is a thank you letter for their giving. So this is what he says to them in verse 7. Just as it is right for me to think this of you all because I have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my chains and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel you are all partakers of me. I mean with me of grace. Paul is saying when you did what you did to me and the ministry, you partook or you became a partaker with me of this grace. So you are participating together with grace. You have connected with the grace. When you support a man of God, and of course a woman of God, anyone who is a grace from Christ, then you become a partaker of that grace. Whatever is in that person will also begin to become yours. Uh, that's how we do impartation. That's how we do raising the next generation. That's how we help others to become like what we are. That's what Maurice Saruro said. Become full proof producers. In other words, prove what you preach and pass it on to the next generation. Let them also become the army of the Lord. Let them also prove the same Christ you receive. They can also receive because it's transferable. We need to teach the church how do you participate? How do you become a partaker? How do you walk with others that are grace? So if you keep criticizing men of God, oh my pastor was squeezing. If you keep blowing them up and you keep you know, becoming a critic and saying all kinds of stuff, you are throwing down the grace of God and trampling on it and saying whatever Jesus did on the cross to save that man was useless. You are in a danger zone. Kaya Sata. All right. See to Andele Kesho. We'll continue tomorrow. We have finished suddenly. So that you can come tomorrow. Stand up on your feet. And it's not pastoral psychology. Stand up. We have finished suddenly. <laughs>